Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tracy and if you don't know me, I have a passion for upcycling clothing and I teach sewing on here. I finally sewed and filmed the making of this silk strapless dress and I'll also be showing you guys how to make a version with straps. I created a digital sewing pattern for you guys and it's available on my Etsy. I'm still very new to making digital patterns so I can't guarantee size is going to fit you. This pattern is geared towards a smaller bust as you can tell. There's like a lot of spillage going on. I recommend adding straps to the dress if you don't want like this much spillage. I personally prefer the version with the straps just because I personally don't like wearing very much strapless items because I find myself like having to pull things up all the time. If you guys have a slightly bigger bust, just message me and I'm gonna do my best to like help you guys adjust it. The TikTok of me draping this dress went viral, um, so I wanna just thank you guys for all of the love and support. And I finally reached 20,000 on YouTube and I reached over 100K on TikTok, so I just wanna thank you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. You can cut out your pieces in any way you want. Just make sure you cut them on the true bias. So you can follow my silk dress tutorial if you want to cut out your pieces the way I do it there. Or if you want to do it like the production style, you're going to just take some paper and just roll it out on the floor and just take your silk and just leave it all in one giant piece, which should be about two and a half yards. I have like two and a quarter. My silk is 45 inches wide and so is my paper. So it was perfect to just lay out my giant piece of fabric and I'm just lining up the straight grain with the straight edge of the paper. And then I'm dropping a straight line down for the cross grain. And I'm just kind of squaring this fabric onto that piece of paper. So everything lays flat and you just want to pin everything in place. As you can see, this is like my layout. On the sewing pattern, I have marked the straight grain, so just make sure that line is perpendicular to the straight grain on the fabric. And it's very important to never cut silk on the fold. You always wanna just cut one piece at a time. So here I am cutting my fabric with my rotary cutter, and I suggest using a rotary cutter. It just gets a better cut than scissors do. And for pattern pieces four and five, you need to just cut out some fusible interfacing. On the pattern, I indicate how much of each piece to cut out. So you're just gonna place it on your fusible and just use your rotary cutter and cut out all of those pieces. And you're just gonna take it to the iron and just like press it onto the wrong side of your fabric with those little glue dots facing down. And you're just taking that iron right on top of it and holding it for a few like 10 seconds and then just moving on to the next area for another 10 seconds and your fabric is fused which makes it a little bit stiffer and it'll just be good for when you're adding grommets to the back. If you're adding straps to the dress and just using loops in the back instead of grommets you don't have to do fusible. After cutting out all of your pieces, just make sure you mark the darts and the notches on all of them with your water soluble marker or some chalk, whatever you choose. Before we actually start sewing the pieces together, just take your pattern piece and you're going to do a stay stitch around all of the edges except the hem. So just stay stitch everything besides the hem on your pieces and you want to just like carry it carefully to the sewing machine on the other piece of paper just so it doesn't start growing or anything because silk is very finicky. Just stitch a quarter inch around those pieces and use a stitch size 5 and just make sure to use a silk needle when you're sewing with silk because it's very fine and it's only going to make really small stitch holes in your fabric. Try not to play with your fabric so much, so just do that stay stitch and don't let it hang off the table because bias loves to grow. With the bodice portion of the dress, you're going to just fold right sides together and you're going to just sew that dart. So you're just going to place a pin where the dart starts and where it ends and just take it to the sewing machine. When I sew a dart, I like to just start with my needle in the fabric first and then I take a straight edge piece of paper and connect the bottom of the dart to the top of the dart and I just follow that straight edge and I stitch all the way until I get to the end of the dart but don't back tack. You're going to just leave a tail of thread and you're going to do about three knots and then trim it. If you want straps on your dress instead of doing the strapless with the sleeve method, you're going to just make some spaghetti and trim some seam allowance for the dart and just do like a half inch and you want to use pinking shears so i'm just demonstrating on paper but you should use pinking shears so your fabric doesn't fray and you're just going to take that spaghetti strap and just sandwich it right between those that dart if that makes sense so like you're just going to place it right below where the dart ends on one side and then you're just going to like 
fold it in half and just sew your dart normally and when you end up sewing it you're just gonna have the strap sticking out so it's gonna look like this with the front and back skirt just overlock the underbust and the side seams and the top of the facing so you're just gonna overlock everything besides the hem on those two pieces you need to make a like 40 inch long piece of spaghetti so I'm just taking like an inch and a half strip that's 40 inches long and folding right sides together and just using my sewing machine and sewing a quarter inch seam allowance all the way down and I'm using a stitch size too it's the best for silk because it's a smaller stitch to trim your seam allowance down I'm doing this by overlocking it and just getting close to that stitch as possible and you're just gonna take a safety pin and turn it right side out and this piece of spaghetti is gonna be used to sandwich in between the top of the dress and the bottom skirt so you can get that like gathered effect at the front of the dress so you're just going to take your spaghetti and just find the midpoint and just place it at that point on the skirt and just tack it down just pin those two layers together at the bottom under bust seam on the bust portion piece and just like do a stay stitch i made the accident of just like overlocking it which kind of stretched it out so don't do that just do a straight stitch Take that bust piece and just place right sides together and just match up that like center point with the point of the skirt and you're just going to pin and ease everything in place. I recommend slashing like a quarter inch on both pieces so it's easier to sew that like curve and that point and feel free to mark your seam allowance so you know where you're sewing on your sewing machine. When you get to that point you can just pivot and sew the other side. After sewing that underbust seam, I ended up just clipping it a bit more just so it would lay a bit flatter. And then I just took the iron to it and just like pressed it up. And then I just re-overlocked it so I could trim the seam allowance a little bit shorter. So I recommend trimming it to like a quarter inch seam allowance and then just like clean finishing the ends with a zigzag stitch or an overlock, whatever you choose. Set the front dress aside and just grab your back piece and you're just going to fold where we clipped or marked those notches. So you're just folding the wrong sides together and this is going to be like your facing. So you're just going to like pin at the side seam and then you're just going to tack down those sides. So down a quarter inch on either side and your back piece has that really nice cowl back to it now. So you're just going to grab the front of the dress and you're going to just take the back piece and place right sides together. Right at the waist at the front of the dress, there's notches where I indicated on the pattern, so I like marked them. So you're just going to line up the back of the dress to those notches on the front of the dress, so right sides together, and you're just going to pin that side seam all the way down. I take it to the sewing machine and I'm just going to sew a half inch seam allowance all the way down the side seam and don't forget to back tack at the top of the waist. For the back panel pieces, you're going to just start with panel 5 and you're just going to mark the half inch seam allowance at the top and bottom of these four pieces. So two of them are for the lining and two of them are for the main fabric. Repeat this to pattern four piece and you're gonna just like clip the curves and you're gonna just iron that seam allowance towards the inside of the fabric like so. It's all seam allowances are pressed towards the wrong side of the fabric. You're just gonna take pattern piece five and place right sides together at the center back and just pin along that seam with the seam allowance folded inward. So when you sew, um, all the seam allowance is already in and you're just gonna have like a finished hem and top hem. Don't forget to back tack and just sew a half inch seam allowance all the way down and back tack at the end also. Push the seam allowance towards the lining and you're just going to do an under stitch making sure you stitch that seam allowance to the back. So you're stitching about a sixteenth of an inch away from that seam. The under stitch is very important. It makes the lining turn underneath the main fabric so it, you get a really nice crisp edge. And you're just going to take it back to the sewing machine and just sew both layers together with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So this is going to be a channel for your bone and then you're going to do another one which will be for your grommets and the third one will be for another bone. If you're making the version with these straps and no boning, you're going to just make two channels for the back panel and that's it. Take pattern piece number four and you're going to take your dress and at the side seam you're just going to take your main piece and place right sides together at the side seam. I like to mark a half inch seam allowance right at the underarm 
right on that side seam so I can like see where I'm gonna place the pattern piece number four on so where it ends and I'm just pinning it to the side seam and I'm pinning it all the way down you can stitch it down a quarter inch at the side seam and then you can like place it on the lining and sandwich that side seam in between those two pieces but I'm just gonna sew this all in one go so just pin it to the lining so that the side is sandwiched in between the two pieces and the side seam will be encased in between those if that makes sense Take it to the sewing machine and sew a half inch seam allowance and now you can just start clipping that seam allowance on the inside so just clip it diagonally towards the top of the dress and you won't have that seam allowance sticking out just repeat that to the bottom part of that seam so it's not sticking out at the bottom of the back hem as well with the inside of the dress facing you you're going to just start by taking pattern piece five and you're going to attach it to four so you're gonna place pattern piece five, the lining towards the lining, if that makes sense. And you're just gonna pin it at that seam. And you're only pinning it to the lining first. So just pin where that hem starts and stops. So um, pattern piece number four, you're not folding that hem in. You're just gonna like leave it open and um, pattern piece five, everything's like folded in and clean finished. So you're just like pinning it to where it's gonna meet when it ends up getting folded on the inside. I hope this is making sense. Um, so just pin that piece onto the lining. You can stay stitch both of these pieces a quarter inch first, and then you're going to just attach the other piece. So um, you're sandwiching the dress in between those panel four, and you're putting panel five in between those two panels if that makes sense so everything's just getting sandwiched in between pattern piece number four so you're taking the main piece and just wrapping it around and just pinning it so trust me when you turn it right side out all the seams are going to be on the inside and it's going to be very clean so you're just going to pin it to it to the other piece and you're just going to take it to the sewing machine and sew a half inch seam allowance once you sewed that together, you can see I'm just showing you what you're gonna do. You're just gonna take the piece and like pull that dress right out and you're gonna just hold on to panel five that's stuck in there and you're just gonna like slowly turn this right side out and the magic happens. So everything's just encased now and the inside of the dress is very clean. Trim all of that seam allowance that is like sticking out of that panel and you can just go ahead and just um, like fold the hems in on pattern piece four and then just pin it in place because we're going to just make the bone channels. Repeat this to the bottom of panel four. Before doing the bone channels, I'm just going to take this to the sewing machine and stitch about like an eighth of an inch away from the edge to hem the bottom of the back pieces. So don't forget to back tack at the start and end of it. We just hemmed the bottom of the back pieces. We're gonna leave the top part of the dress open. Just leave it pinned because it's gonna be easier to sew your bone channel. So just take it to your sewing machine and right next to each seam, you're just gonna sew 3 eighths of an inch away to create a bone channel. So you're just doing two more channels and that's it. And that's what the back of the dress looks like. So for the version with the straps, you don't need to do those extra channels since you're not gonna bone it. Because I'm doing the strapless version, I'm actually boning it because it needs something to hold it up. So I already pre-cut my spiral steel bones. You can also use plastic boning, it's your choice, whatever is better for you. And if you need an in-depth tutorial on how to cut steel bones and tip them, I have linked one. I'm just inserting the bones into the channel once the bones are in, you can just stitch that top hem closed. For the version with the straps, I recommend just inserting your ring and tab first, then hemming that top part. For the sleeves, you need to measure your bicep, so around your arm, and I got 10 inches, so you, whatever you get, you want to multiply that by 2.5 because you need extra fabric so you get that gathered effect. So I end up with a two rectangles that are 26 inches long each, and they're they are about five and a half inches wide. 
And I'm just gonna take these to the overlock machine and just overlock around these rectangles. After overlocking, you're just gonna take right sides together and just sew up a half inch seam allowance so you end up with like a circle. Press that seam allowance open and you can just start hemming the top and the bottom of the cuff. So you're just gonna fold it once a quarter inch and then again so you get a really nice clean finish on the in inside. And you're just gonna pin this all the way around the top and the bottom of the cuff. If it's easier for you, you can feel free to baste it so you don't have that many pins in the way when you're sewing. I like to stitch as I see the inside of it so I know where that fold ends. So I'm stitching like a sixteenth of an inch away from that fold so I have enough room to channel the elastic through. And before you like close the whole thing, you want to just leave like an inch open so you can like actually insert the elastic so you're just like back tacking and leaving an inch open if that makes sense repeat this to the other cuff and now you can just grab your elastic so like i said when you measured your biceps or around your arm um i got 10 inches so you want to add an inch to one of those elastics so you're going to end up with like an 11 piece and a 10 piece so 11 is going to be for the top because that going to be attached to the dress part so you kind of need some space to like lift your arms or else you're gonna like not be able to do that as much and i just added a safety pin to help me feed the elastic through this tunnel and when i get to like the end of the elastic where it hits the opening i'm just like pinning the elastic in place so it stays there and when i reach the other end i'm just taking both ends of the elastic and overlapping three quarters of an inch and pinning it and I'm taking it to the sewing machine and doing a zigzag stitch. I stretch the sleeve cuff and the elastic pops back in and I'm just pinning that one inch opening closed and just taking it to the sewing machine and just top stitching it closed. Just repeat to the rest of the cuffs. Now we can attach the sleeves to the dress so you're just going to place right sides together and line up the seam on the cuff with the side seam on the dress and you're just going to pin that along the top edge together and you're only going to pin about an inch away from the side panel so you're only like going to sew an inch away from the side seam and then sew all the way up until you get to the end of that dart. Take it to the sewing machine and just start stitching this down so i'm just doing a straight stitch to stitch both layers together so it's attached right at the underarm and don't forget to back tack at each end so only an inch away from the side seam and then all the way back up to the dart and back tack and now for hemming the dress you're just going to do a baby hem if you need an in-depth tutorial i will just link the silk dress when i go over how to do a baby hem in depth the grommet placement just take your back pattern piece and on the paper you're just going to mark from the center back 3 8 of an inch line and another one because the second one is where your grommets go. I'm using 5 millimeter grommets so from the top and the bottom edge just mark 3 8 of an inch away for your first grommet placement and then you're just going to connect them and fold the paper in half and just like find the midpoint and that's your center grommet and then fold the middle and the top one together and that is the grommet in between there so you're gonna just end up with a total of five grommets and this is like the perfect way to find these and have them perfectly spaced and now you can just like poke a hole and mark your fabric I finally got a grommet press and this is honestly the best press I have ever used compared to like any handheld ones or even like those cheap style ones on Amazon that aren't very good. Um, this is from Cam Snaps and when I tell you this is like the best machine ever, it really honestly is. I'll link a like review that I looked at before purchasing this product and I completely love that I can do some holes first to puncture my fabric and then there's new dials that are for your grommets so this machine is really awesome because it does grommets snaps and rivets and there's a lot of different sizes and they have so many colors of hardware this machine is just amazing and i can't stress it enough and it's so simple to use for the lace up back you can just buy ribbon but since i have extra fabric i decided to just make my own spaghetti ribbon 
So I'm just cutting out an inch and a half strips and connecting them and just sewing a long piece of spaghetti for my ribbon lace up. And I end up with a piece that's about 80 inches long. Dress is complete. So now you can just finish lacing it up and knot your ends if that's how you desire to finish your spaghetti or you can do a double fold and stitch it down. And now you can try it on. El amor es tan corto, olvidarte No, no, yeah Los dos amamos de más Y enamorado de tu mirar Y tú de otra Porque eres así Ya sé, bebé 